Would I want to go cross country in an electric car? 100%. That was Philip from a YouTube channel called Left Coast EV, and I'm Kari from Maple EV Leaf. If you're already subscribed to our channel, you know that we're a channel all about electric car driving. We do how to's, tests, reviews, all kinds of things, but specifically, we're focused on what it is to drive electric in Canada. And we're starting a new feature today in this video that's called the Cross Canada Checkup. And our first guest is Philip. So Philip drives electric in BC. That's where he lives. And in this video, he's going to share a ton about his experience there, charging, uh, switching to electric in the first place, all kinds of really useful things and information for people who haven't quite yet switched to electric or are thinking about it, but for others as well. This is easily the longest video that we posted on our channel thus far, but it's well worth watching. So please watch it till the end and you'll hear all kinds of really good things from Philip. I will repeat this and give you more detail at the end of this video too. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, but just quickly here, if you drive electric um, in any part of the country, uh, and if you're interested in getting featured in this series as well, maybe you have a YouTube channel already, so then you'll get the benefit of driving more traffic, more views to your channel as well. Or maybe you don't. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to get me to edit your content, do the work for you, uh, but you want to share your experience, get in touch with us, please. Uh, that's best done through the email address that we have for Maple Leafy Leaf. Again, I'll get back to this at the end of this video. Now let's go to Philip in BC. My name is Philip and I run the Left Coast EV YouTube channel. I am based in British Columbia, Canada, Coquitlam to be specific. And today in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the uh, charging infrastructure and answer some of the questions that viewers might have regarding owning, driving and living with an electric car. So let's get started. The first question that I always get asked when I say that uh, I drive an electric car is what made you go electric anyways? Um, well, I live in BC and if you're not from Canada, you might not know that British Columbia at one point had some of the most expensive fuel prices in all of Canada. We were well over two dollars per liter. Um, and prior to this, I already knew that driving uh, a petrol ice car wouldn't be something that I wanted to do. I wanted to explore other new technologies. And uh, that is why in uh, 2021, I decided to go fully electric. So I sold my um, ICE internal combustion engine vehicle. And at that time, we had a lot of different government incentives to go electric. So I decided to take all of them and I was lucky to to get approved for all of the incentives and I bought my first electric car um, and I haven't looked back since. I mean, that was the greatest decisions I've ever made. I get to charge the car uh, most of the time uh, for free because we have different chargers around where I live uh, somewhere uh, that you don't even need to pay for. Um, there's always new uh, charging companies popping up. I'll show you one today um, and usually during a promotion period when they're uh, ironing out their uh, software and technology and stuff like that they offer free charging to customers so you know uh, it was it was a decision that you know I kind of made because of fuel prices but then again also because of you know the environment and, and, and driving a nice car but uh, yeah the catalyst was the gas prices I wanted to get away from that and that's why I decided to go electric in 2021 um, and that was the best decision I have ever made I think so definitely gas prices first environment second and third because I always like new things and I wanted to see how driving an electric car would be so that was uh, that was the catalyst for our, for for going fully electric now in a, in our household so the biggest benefit i think of driving an electric car for me anyways is all the questions i get asked and I, and I love talking about electric cars and this is why i started a youtube channel based around 
uh, EVs and, and uh, you know, charging infrastructure and so on and so forth, right? So I really like talking about it and I really like, uh, you know, educating people because most people out there don't have an idea of how it feels to drive electric. They feel like in winter, the car can't go anywhere because the battery is too cold and it will lose all of its capacity within minutes. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of stuff being posted on the news or quote unquote news about electric cars that is simply untrue. So, you know, I just want to educate people. Um, so this is something that, you know, um, I would say uh, I like doing. So this is one of the bigger benefits, obviously. Um, the next benefit, I think, would be, you know, the money savings. Um, I don't have to go and fill up uh, gas right now in BC as I'm recording this. One liter of regular fuel is $1.80. Um, so it's quite expensive. We used to go across the border to Washington State, but it's also getting a little bit more expensive there as well. So, you know, that's another big benefit and savings that I can see. Um, also, reliability. I, I don't have to worry about oil changes. I don't have to worry about the engine of an internal combustion uh, car having issues, right? I have an electric motor. Um, these things are super reliable. The battery technology nowadays in modern EVs is far superior to what we had even a few years ago. Um, you know, so, so not having to, to, to worry about maintenance costs. You know, I've driven in this car already 45,500 kilometers and I haven't changed the brakes because I use regenerative braking, um, which means that the motor, the, the electric motor, slows down the car. And in a Kia like this, for example, it slows me down to around eight kilometers an hour, and then I just need to use the brake for the last, you know, one or two meters, right, to stop. With a Tesla that I have, um, the regenerative braking changes into, uh, you know, just standard braking just before the, 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 the car comes to a full stop. So it is basically one pedal driving. And some people like it, some people don't I love it um, I find it to be an excellent way of driving an electric car because you are getting energy back right into the battery which is a benefit so yeah I mean there is so many benefits to to owning an electric car that it would take me hours to make a video but um, you know the cost savings associated with owning a car they're there sure the upfront costs may be a little bit higher but now with you know cheaper cars coming out that might not be an issue anyways for a lot of people right so just give it some time uh, if you f still think that uh, electric cars are expensive give it a year or two when you know hopefully there will be more cars coming onto the market more competition and obviously because of that prices will fall so yeah it's a, it's, it's a great way to drive definitely i wouldn't you know regret a minute of it so right now at uh, in my home we have two electric cars one is the 21 uh, kia soul ev um, this is the limited with the leather seats top of the line one um, it's a great car that was the first one we got simply because we could get the most uh, uh, provincial and government uh, federal government incentives on this vehicle so it made uh, made sense for us to just uh, get rid of our old car um, and get this one uh, because I wasn't sold on EVs when I first got it. So I didn't drive one before. I didn't know what to expect, what the charging would be like. Um, and after I think two weeks, I was totally sold. Um, and then we did our first road trip and I was totally sold. Like I was worried that during the road trip we would encounter a lot of issues and a lot of problems, but we didn't. It was amazing, you know. It was just driving like a normal car, right? And there was no issues, no problems whatsoever. So um, after that, uh, we decided to get another car. So we got the 2021 uh, Tesla Model 3, standard range plus, the cheapest one. Um, so now we are a two EV household. We live in a condo, so we can't charge at home, unfortunately, because our Strata, which is, you know, the management company that manages the building, has said that it's hard to put in chargers because our building is older and they would have to do yada, 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 anyways, anyways. So we're basically stuck um, charging on public infrastructure. And then I'll take you guys later for a tour to show you within 10 minute driving distance uh, around my home, how many chargers we can find. And uh, some of them are free. So that's also a benefit. Some are free, some are really cheap, and some are fast. So you have you know everything across the board which is awesome so yeah currently two cars 2021 kia soul ev limited and a 2021 tesla standard range plus 
So like I mentioned previously, the first EV that I purchased was uh, the Kia in 2021. And that's when I started driving electric. To be exact, at the end of April 2021. Um, that's when we got delivery of this vehicle. Um, it was at the you know beginning stages of the pandemic, which was also interesting because at that time we still had cars available on the lot um, within dealer dealerships, which was pretty amazing. Um, after all of that, like when we got our car, a couple months later, it was very hard to get a new vehicle. The waiting times were becoming ridiculous, so I felt very lucky that I was able to get this car as fast as I did. Basically, I just walked into the dealership, they had it on the lot, I test drove it, and that was it, right? So uh, that was when I first started driving electric. Prior to that, never. I mean, I've had people that I know that had electric cars and they were always like, oh, this is pretty cool, you should get an electric car. But I was never sold on it until I started driving my, my own electric car, going on road trips, finding out that it's just as it is driving a normal um, internal combustion engine vehicle, there is no difference. And I fell in love with electrics. And ever since then, I don't even consider uh, going back to a gas car. A lot of people who I meet, they, they also want to know how I use my electric car. And it's interesting because I work from home, my wife doesn't, so she has to drive to work every day. Her commute is about 30 minutes um, there and 30 minutes back home. So she drives about an hour. And I can tell you that if she uses this Kia and we charge it up on a Sunday, for up to around 80%. Um, I don't do a 100% charge until unless I'm going on a road trip. So we charge it up to about 80% and she can use the, the car throughout the whole week. We don't have to keep charging it. So pretty good. Um, and I'll show you where I go to charge for free for the whole week. So I don't spend any money. Um, so that's most of the time we just drive in the city. Obviously, if you look at my YouTube channel, you will see a lot of road trips and we went to the US, we went through Canada, um, and it's a great road trip vehicle, this one. Um, it's, it's super comfortable. It's big enough for a family of three like us. Um, it charges fast enough. Obviously, there are faster charging vehicles right now on the market. Um, but for our needs, plenty fast enough. We stop at a charger. We charge, we go to the toilet, we go buy some snacks or whatever, stretch our legs. And by the time we're done, you know, getting freshened up and if i were to say that then the car is ready to go so i've never experienced a thing on our road trips where i was waiting for the car to finish charging it was always the opposite i wish i had a little bit more time to do the things i wanted to do so there's always that um you know we did take uh, this vehicle on longer longer road trips so the longest road trip we've ever taken was a week around uh, western canada we went from british columbia to alberta jasper national park if you know where that is um, and then we came back home so this was the longest road trip we've taken it was seven days not sure how many kilometers total it was i think it's uh, like around 3,500 to 4,000, something like that. I have the whole series on my YouTube channel if you want to watch. Um, never had any issues with any chargers, charged successfully every time we showed up at a charger. Um, and then, yeah, I also put all the costs down of how much it, it all cost me to, to charge up. Um, so it was a great road trip car. Uh, so seven days, of, you know, over 3,000 kilometers, I believe it was. So, you know, long, long car trips, same as any other car. You just have to think that in about two to three hours, usually three hours, you need to stop. But unless you have the bla a bladder the size of, I don't know, like uh, the moon or something, <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to stop anyways, right? So, um, you know, kids need to stretch. My 12 year old needs to get out of the car sometimes, right? Cause he gets antsy. Uh, so, so, you know, I'm the same way. I gotta get out, stretch my legs, you know, we gotta go eat something. So I see no difference absolutely no difference you know a, a 40 minute stop every three hours to charge and and stretch our legs it's not an issue for me so yeah great road trip car the the savings on the road trip again are tremendous um so yeah definitely recommended another question that everybody has and it's a good question is how do we charge our electric cars well, first, let's start with the basics, okay? Very quickly. There are three types of chargers right now uh, offered to electric vehicle owners. Level one, which is your standard 110 uh, plug that you have at home, any outlet will do. You can use the supply charger that comes with your car if it did come. Nowadays, some manufacturers don't include it, but you can buy one on you know, Amazon really, really cheaply. Um, and then that will give you around 1.3 kilowatt 
you know, per hour. So if you're, you got a 64 kilowatt hour battery, more or less, it will take 64 hours, right? More or a little bit less because it's 1.3, right? Um, I, I believe this one is like uh, from around 10%. It will take 48 hours to charge fully on a level one. Um, so that's the slowest, obviously, right? But that's available to everybody and everywhere you can find an outlet like this, right? At home, if you're on a road trip, you're staying at an Airbnb somewhere, you can always plug in your car. The second one is your level two charging, which is, um, you know, 240. Okay, and then these chargers are a little bit faster, um, usually around the seven kilowatt uh, per hour mark. Um, and then obviously that can charge your car anywhere from four to five, six hours, depending on how big your battery is. So a lot of vehicle owners, uh, electric vehicle owners will install these kind of chargers at home so that if they come home, their car is depleted, you know, around 10%, they will plug it in, charge it overnight and wake up the next morning with a full tank of gas, so to say. So that's something that a lot of people do. I can't because I live in a condo, like I mentioned, and I am not allowed to install one. Uh, then we have finally the DC fast chargers, which are the level three, and those are the fastest. Okay, so as DC means is direct current. So it takes the current directly from the grid uh, through this machine right into the battery. So there is no middleman in the, in the middle, right? So this is where you get the fastest charging. And this car that we're sitting in right now, the 2021 Kia Soul EV, um, can take up to a maximum, and this is what I've seen uh, on my display, 79 kilowatt per hour, okay? So theoretically, if you had that throughout the charge curve, you can charge this car in less than an hour from zero to 100. Now, that doesn't happen because there's charging curves and so on and so on, but I won't get into that. Suffice to say, if you are charging from 10 to 80 and you will show up with a warm battery at the charger ready to charge, you should be able to charge this car in around 40 minutes, okay? And that gets you back on the road, that gives you another three hours of driving and you're good to go. So those are the three things, okay? How do I charge my car most often? It just depends. If I need a quick charge because I forgot to do it or I was busy doing something else um, on the weekend, so then I will go to a DC fast charger, charge up to 80% and have a week's worth of driving. Now, if I have more time or I'm not using the car on the weekend, I will go and plug in on one of the chargers I'll show you today, uh, level one, where it's 1.3 kilowatt per hour. Yeah, it takes a long time, but it's also free. Or if I'm in the middle and I need just a few, um, you know, kilo, uh, uh, kilowatts into my battery pack, then I will go for a level two or if I'm at a shopping center, which I'm also going to show you guys today. So there's many different ways, but most of the time I either do a level one if I have more time or a level three if I just want to charge up very quickly, put the car in the garage and have it ready for the weeks of driving. I wish I could charge at home, but that's impossible right now. Maybe in the future, if I get a house that I can control, uh, well, I can control the, the, the charger installation, then definitely that will be uh, how I will charge most of the time. But on road trips, always DC fast charging and always to 80. Never go below, be above 80% because it just charges too slow and you're wasting money and you're wasting time. And you're taking out the charger too from other people who want to charge. But that's a different story. I'll make a video on my channel soon. Okay, let's do a quick tour now. And uh, we're going to look at some of the public charging infrastructure uh, within 10 minutes driving distance of where I live in Coquitlam, okay? So right now we are at the shopping center, Coquitlam Center, and I'll show you what level two charging looks like in BC. All right, let's get out of the car and have a look. This is Coquitlam Center. As you can see, huge parking garage. I live somewhere there, I'm not going to be specific. And uh, yeah, lots of people come shopping here and let's look at uh, some of the charges that we have here. Okay, available, Le all level two, uh, which is good enough when you're going shopping. So these are all charge point units. So we've got a Tesla Model Y right here. We've got Tesla Model S and then we have Tesla Model Y as well. Then we have some plug-in hybrids, and we have a Kia like mine, just a little bit newer, I think, because the new logo. And then, charge point. So there's quite a few of them here. One, so that's just one plug. Two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine total plugs right here. And yeah, if you're going to the shopping mall, why not park here? And it's all nicely uh, signed with like a EV logo. Yeah, and then you can charge. Pretty nice. I like these older Teslas, by the way. Really nice cars. The older Model S, that's the 75D. Yeah, so there you go. That's our first stop. Very nice little installation here. And like you see, lots of um, empty spots. So if you're coming shopping at Coquitlam Center and you drive an EV, park over here. And I think it's like a dollar a minute, something like that. Let's go to the next location then. Now we're coming up on a DC fast charger station. So this is a 50 kilowatt BC Hydro, just outside of a uh, real Canadian superstore. And then there is a, a brand new Chevy Bolt part here. So these are the units. I'm gonna try to get some better angle for you guys. So there's two, but um, only one car can charge at one time. So what do we have? We have a Mach-E, we have a Nissan Leaf, all right, let's go around to the front here. And I'm gonna try to give you guys another angle on this. So BC Hydro is known for clean energy. So all of this is powered by, um, by hydro. So yeah, these are, this is a 50 kilowatt. So this is already called a DC fast charger because anything over 50 kilowatt is a fast charger here in BC. Okay, let's go to the next location. Now we're at the Chevron gas station and the newest player in the EV charging game with their very unique fast chargers. So let's just drive up there a little bit. So here, um, Chevron gas stations and their on the run convenience stores launch these things, all right? I'm not sure why that Prius Prime is there. He can't charge on a DC fast charger, but that Kona can. Um, so these are 150 units or if two cars are charging, at the one time, it's only 75 uh, per each vehicle. But this one has its quirks. It's a different kind of charger and I'm gonna make a dedicated video about it. Let's see if I can charge up because I only have a few percentage left. See if there's still anything left in the battery of the charger. Yeah, the charger has a battery. All right, let's, let's see if we can uh, plug in. All right, I decided to plug in. So these are the new chargers. This one's not working. This one has a Chatamo and a CCS, so it's 150. And then we're charging here. I need to top up a little bit. But like I said, these chargers are a little bit special because uh, inside there, there's a battery. So they're not connected to the grid. I have to charge up the internal battery and then you can charge. So when the battery gets depleted, the charge speed drops to around 20 kilowatt, or if two cars are charged, 10 each. On, a, on the best day, but yeah, that's the quirk of on the run. But I'll make a video on my channel separately about everything I found out so far. I've been testing them for a few weeks now. So anyway, let's walk up and see uh, what the charge speed's like. So the charge speed's pretty good on a cold battery. So we got two cars. We got that Kona at 53 and I'm doing 50 on this one. So we'll see how long this will last though because like I say, there's an internal battery and once it's finished, well, then you drop down to very, very slow speeds. Just finished charging uh, over there at, at On The Run and it was free because they're testing. So that's another free charger and a DC one around my uh, vicinity. So now we come to another charger here. And this one's pretty interesting because, so this is a charge point, right? And as you know, you can call charge point, install a charger if you want at your premises. What I like about these ones are just very clear signage that's available. You got CCS and then you got Chatamo. But look at this, you see the solar panels. I think those power this charger, at least to some degree. So I'm not sure what this is. This is like a school or something, a technical school. And they also have um, over there, down there, Okay, two charging spots, as well as here, one charging spot. And these are your J1772 connectors, right? So these are your level two. So there's this one, and then there's one there in the back. 
so you can charge two cars. Very cool location. Um, obviously, there's only the one charge point charger. It is quite reliable, so it does get filled up, especially in the evenings with people charging uh, for their week of driving to work and doing whatever. But yeah, I really like uh, charge point chargers. Really cool. And with these solar panels up there, I really do wonder if they're somehow connected. I could never figure this out, but yeah, it would be interesting. Oh, and this one is a 62.5 kilowatt fast charger from ChargePoint. Okay, let's get back on the road and go to our final location. Very, very close to my house. While we're driving to the last location, just want to kind of summarize what we've seen so far. So within 10 minutes of where I live, there is even more, but I just showed you guys the most important locations. There is a lot of charging uh, infrastructure that I can use. And it's not an issue to, uh, for now, to find an empty charger. Uh, obviously during peak times, busy times, yes, there's lots of people waiting to charge and so on and so forth. But, you know, apps like PlugShare show us the status of different chargers. And if people are nice, they will then update their status. So generally, I'm very happy um, in the city because if one doesn't work, then you can go to the next one, which is not very far away. Now, the problems arise when you're on a road trip and you are exclusively using DC fast chargers, right? So um, in Canada, I haven't had a bad experience yet where I arrived at a charger and it didn't work. Um, there were instances where they didn't give the maximum output sometimes because of whatever reasons, but uh, that was the only the, that was the only issue. Um, however, when we were on the trip to the U.S., um, we had one instance where we were driving back home to to BC in Canada, and we wanted to charge at a specific location that I mapped out for myself. And then when we arrived at that specific location, unfortunately, the chargers were out of order. Only one was working out of four. And the one that was working was already occupied by someone, right? So we had to wait a little bit and then charge up just a tiny bit so I can get it to the next charger. So that was only the only instance. Uh, obviously, there is a little bit of a, I wouldn't say fear, but you just kind of feel like, okay, um, when I arrive, is the charger gonna work? Am I going to get the charge that I need? Yes or no. But now after driving for, you know, what is it? Almost two years in April, um, I've kind of gotten ac accustomed to it and I don't worry so much. So I only can see that the situation is going to improve in the future and that we're going to have more reliability. But that's my only ask. If you are a charge point operator and you buy equipment, Please make sure that you maintain it, make sure it works well, and make sure that there are no issues, okay? I know things can happen, but you know, it would be nice if uh, the charging infrastructure worked as advertised. We are at the final location for today. So here we go. We have another level two charge point charger, and we've got a classic Ionic charging. So there you go two handles you can charge here okay signage for evs and then also this is what i was talking about and then this one is your um free level one charging that we have here uh, very close to where i live this one seems to be red actually right now so i don't think it's in operation but there are one two three total and it's powered by this company, Plug Zio. Okay, again, EV parking. So this is your 110 standard household plug that gives you 1.3 kilowatt of charge per hour. Okay, so if you come here and you spent a day, maybe two days, if you're lucky to get a spot, then you will have a full vehicle depending on how big your battery is and this is within the parking garage of coquitlam uh, city hall so level two over there and level one 
over here. And also across the street, there is a library. There's a bunch of level ones there too. There's a swimming pool just across the street out there. There's level twos over there. Um, there's a park down that way, you know, three minute walk, there are level twos. So you're surrounded by charging infrastructure, which is pretty amazing. The biggest piece of advice that I would give anyone who's looking to get into an electric car is just to go to the dealership and drive one. That's the most important thing that you should do. See if it's for you. Um, if, the, if driving an EV is for you, then you will enjoy it. If not, then don't do it. And if uh, dealerships don't have them, you can rent a Tesla from Hertz. You can also go on Turo and rent a bunch of other electric cars that are CS, CCS capable. Um, you know, just go and drive one. But I think that, you know, once you sit behind the wheel of an electric car and you drive it, you either love it or hate it. And if you love it, buy one because that sensation of regen braking and all of that is very specific to to electric cars and for some people that's a deal breaker i understand that but for a lot of people they fall in love with it and i did and i fell in love with it and i loved it from day one so this is kind of why i decided to go all in on electric um, because it was just for me another one is obviously try to look at your provincial state whatever rebates that you may or may not have for electric cars, federal as well, because there's a lot of incentive to go electric right now. Um, and those things may go away in the near future. So make sure that you capitalize that on that early. And just recently, Tesla lowered their prices to one of the lowest points ever. So that's also makes it a compelling offer to go and get a Tesla Model 3, which has always been my choice for the best electric car for most people. Would I want to go cross country in an electric car? 100%. And this is something that I actually want to do. Um, and I'm planning on doing quite soon. I want to go from Tewasin, which is on the west coast of Canada in British Columbia, all the way to Nova Scotia. And I want to do it as fast as possible. So basically two drivers, we don't stop and we go. Uh, there's currently a record set by a team of, uh, uh, of two Canadians who drove a Tesla Model 3 long range. I don't know how long they, they took, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't that long, actually, <laughs> to be honest. The video is on, on YouTube, so you can just search uh, uh, Tesla Model 3 Canada Cannonball or something, or World Record, something like that, and, and it'll pop up for you guys. So, very interesting video. They did it in the winter, uh, had no problems charging whatsoever. So this is something that I want to do in the future, is try to see if I can beat that time, maybe in a Tesla, maybe in a CCS car. Okay, and then the final question um, that I was asked to answer was, would I be switching back to an ICE, internal combustion engine vehicle, from my fleet of electrics? And the answer is simply no. I will never switch back. I'm 100% electric right now, and I love it. And I wouldn't change it for anything, anything in my life right now. Um, I think that the infrastructure is just going to get better. Cars are going to get better. They're going to have a longer range. Battery technology is going to improve. Some of the battery technology that China is working on right now that charges faster, has better thermals. So winter driving is going to be better. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. So yeah, no way, no way. If someone took away my uh, electric car today, I would be like, I want it back. Okay. I don't want to drive a, a, a gas car and spend a dollar eighty right now in uh, BC two to fill it up. No thanks. You know, uh, honestly, since around mid December when that uh, free DC fast charger opened from on the run, I have not spent a cent to charge this car. So I've been driving for free, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, you can't say that about a gas car, can you? And no maintenance, which is also great. No oil changes. No part changes, no worrying if something's gonna go wrong. It just works. I get in and I drive. I never have to think about, will it turn on in the morning? Because it always does. So yeah, no thanks. Those who wanna drive uh, gas cars, go right ahead. But me, I will never be switching. Okay, that's it. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, it was awesome to, to get to answer these questions, show you around where I live in BC and all of the stuff that we have available. Make sure to go to check out my channel, Left Coast TV on YouTube and uh, watch some of those road trip videos, watch some of the charger reviews. It will show you that not everything is perfect, right? Because I don't just show the perfect side of EV ownership. Um, there has been some pitfalls with charging, but overall a very positive ex experience so far for almost two years driving electric. Okay, thanks so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.
thank you, Philip, and thank you for watching. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, if you drive electric in any part of Canada, I'm interested in hearing from you. So please get in touch with us. You can do that uh, by going to our YouTube channel page. And from there, you will get the contact information for us. Send me an email or even just add it in the comments here if you want to get the conversation started that way. I'm looking for more people all around Canada to tell us more about your uh, experience driving electric. Thank you for watching. This is Maple Leafy Leaf. Please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Thanks again. Take care.